up and doing my morning stretches and I decided I'm going to do a day in the life today. So I'm just going to take you along with me for my day, my normal day at home. I am of course quarantined but I'm always home because I'm homebound so it's just going to be a normal day in the life for me. So I tend to crack a bunch of stuff in my body when I wake up and after I stretch and crack I nebulize. Well first I take my meds and then I take my vitals and then I nebulize and then I set up my IV treatment for the day. I do two to three a day generally unless I need more. I am not feeling too bad right now. I, I have my oxygen at level. I think it's at a two right now but um, I haven't been breathing too bad thankfully. Just taking my oxygen, heart rate, and blood pressure readings right now, which I do every morning, every night, and I'm supposed to do every afternoon, but I generally don't do it in the midday unless I'm feeling really bad and symptomatic. Looks like my pulse ox is broken, y'all. The battery needs to be changed. AAA batteries. I need to get some of those. Okay, and my blood pressure is kind of high. So I have hyperpots, meaning my blood pressure goes either really low, like dangerously low, or really high. And today it's pretty high. It's 161 over 85, which is high blood pressure. Um, generally a good healthy blood pressure is around 120 or so. Uh, I never can get my blood pressure right. It's either too high or too low. Today it's too high. I have not taken my meds yet, so maybe it will readjust and balance out after I take my meds. My heart rate looks okay though, 87, which is pretty good for me sitting down, so not too bad. Hopefully the blood pressure will calm down over the day. So today, this is what my cocktail of meds looks like, this morning I should say take meds morning, noon, and night, and then as needed. So now it's time to nebulize, and I nebulize albuterol, at least for now. I generally switch off between albuterol and levalbuterol, but my doctor right now wants me to just stick with albuterol morning, noon, and night. And then these like ampules. Uh, I do one to two. I am gonna do just one vial. Of the albuterol. nebulized and I got dressed and put a little bit of makeup on and now I'm gonna set up my first IV of the day I do usually two a day unless I need more that's two liters a day so I'm gonna set that up right here and then run that and then my infusion nurse is coming to change my pig line dressing it has to be changed once a week so she comes once a week to do that and then I'm gonna have some breakfast or I'll have breakfast and then she'll come depending on when she comes She'll be here between 2 and 3, and it's after 2 right now, so she'll be here any minute now. So yeah, I'm just going to set up my IV, and I'll let you guys see how I do that. I usually wait until my infusion nurse comes before I set up my IV so she doesn't have to disconnect my IV fluids uh, to take care of my pick line. But today she's coming a little bit later so I can't really wait until she, after she comes. Because the longer I wait without my IV fluids, the worse I feel and um, the worse my vitals get. So I cannot wait very long after I wake up before I start doing my IV fluids. 
Thankfully, I still have some hand sanitizer. Very grateful for that. Flush with saline before I run my IV fluids. And then after, I flush again with saline and then also with heparin to prevent blood clots. I have already had a blood clot because I am uh, predisposed to get them, or at high risk, should I say, to get them. So hopefully I don't get another one. Having a central line also makes you high risk to get blood clots, so that's double reason why I have to make sure I always do that heparin. It's very important. to clean everything with alcohol for 20 to 30 seconds before I use it just to make sure everything is extra sterile because I don't want to get sepsis again like I had last uh, September from a infected port unfortunately so we got to take all the methods and precautions necessary to prevent infections Back. Now I'm going to get the get a little bit of fluid out of it to take care of any air bubbles that are in the line. Just got to do that by letting gravity do its job. Now that that's connected, my pick line and my IV, I'm going to set up or uh, put in the IV tubing into the Curlin pump, which is the machine that pumps the IV fluids. And for those who are wondering, I do daily IV fluids because of my POTS, which stands for Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. I get extremely dehydrated without daily fluids and my body doesn't produce enough blood due to the hypovolemia, which is associated with the POTS. It just means my body has a shortage of blood. So the daily IV fluids help my body to produce enough blood to sustain me and keep my vitals stable. Before I was getting my IV fluids, I was in the hospital all the time and in the ER all the time getting um, IV fluids. <laughs> because my vitals were always really unstable. I would faint, I would go into shock, I would, I would just be feeling awful all the time. I had zero energy to function or do anything. Um, it was really hard for years before I got this treatment, so I'm so grateful that I have it. I went about nine years before I got this treatment, before I had insurance. So thankful, it's a huge help. It helps me so much, I wouldn't be able to do YouTube if I didn't have these IV fluids, so. So now that I've set up my IV fluids, I'm going to put it in my backpack because I would put it on my IV pole, which is right here, but it doesn't have wheels, so it's hard to move around if I want to go to the bathroom or just move anywhere around in my apartment. It's better to keep the IV fluids in my backpack. That way I can move around with it, even though it's heavy. Too heavy to put on my back with my spinal cord injury and all my back issues. I have degenerative disc disease, osteoarthritis, uh, herniations, stenosis, a lot of problems with my spine. So I can't put this on my back. I'm leaving the house, then I put it on my wheelchair uh, on the back. And sometimes my mom carries it for me. That's that for now. I just set up my IV fluids, so I'm going to have some breakfast. And then I will record again when my nurse is here to take care of my pick line dressing. So I thought I would show you guys my outfit of the day, even though I'm just at home. These are like some cute pajama pants. I don't know if they're pajama or shorts, I should say pajama shorts. A little bit of crochet at the bottom. 
got this little top from Sheen. It was too big for me for the longest time. It's an extra small, but it's like, it runs pretty big. So yeah, that's, and of course I'm wearing my stylish socks. I look like a dork, right? So sexy. They say fries before guys. I don't know if you can see. I love socks. I'm a big collector of socks. It's like my thing. So yeah, that is my outfit of the day. I have to sit down before I pass out. <laughs> of course, I have to lug around my oxygen and my IV fluids. I'm not about to take you along with me when I go pee, but since this is a day in the life, I thought I would just quickly go over the fact that I use intermittent catheters. So intermittent, catheter intermittent cathetering means I catheterize intermittently, so as needed. This is what the catheter I use looks like from Comfort Medical. It's called Cure Twist T14 is the size. This is just the tube. It's inside of it. I'm not going to show you right now because if I open it up then I wouldn't be sterile. I have to be sterile when I use my catheters otherwise I can get UTIs so don't want that. Uh, since I'm holding my phone I wouldn't be sterile. But I do use cathetering as needed. I'm sorry I'm out of breath even though I have my oxygen. I had to shut it off because it's loud. Yeah so I use catheters as needed because I have neurogenic bladder, meaning my bladder is partially paralyzed. This is due to my spinal cord injury and or my spine surgery.
Hi, I'd like to set an appointment. I have Medicaid. You have Medicaid? Yes. For a couple things, I have hypothyroid and also hypoglycemia. Okay. Yeah, Twenty-ninth of June. Okay, I'll take it. Claire, C L A I R E, eight twenty six eighty seven. Sure, it's one. Two. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Now, Chris, what's the reason? Hypothyroid. That's the main reason because my latest blood work showed my thyroid was really low. Okay. Okay, call one down, two to go. I forgot my number momentarily. Mamayan, what's my phone number? every day for my pump. Now that my second IV is running, I am just going to rest for a little bit, maybe take a short nap. Although a short nap for me is usually three hours, so I'm going to try not to nap, but I'm just going to try to rest for a little bit and hang out with my kitty. So it's the next day and I realized when I reviewed my video that I didn't explain the phone calls that I made. So I just wanted to try to explain that as quickly as possible. It's kind of a long story. So I tried to set up two appointments. I tried to set up an appointment with my ophthalmologist. I'm not going to explain what's going on with my eyes. I'm just going to refer to my last day in the life vlog. I talk about it in that video. I also posted a picture in that video about what's going on with my eyes, so I'm not going to talk about that. I couldn't get a hold of the ophthalmologist anyway, so I did call a new endocrinologist to set up an appointment for my hypothyroidism and for my hypoglycemia. So I've had hypothyroid for 
about eight years, but I was in remission for a year. So I haven't been on my thyroid hormone for a year. But my last blood work, according to my general practitioner, she ordered blood work a couple weeks ago that showed that my thyroid is low or underactive. So it's slow again, which causes a lot of symptoms, including severe fatigue, temperature irregulation, brain fog, headaches, a lot of different problems. I'm not exactly sure all of the symptoms it causes right now. But uh, so I had to set up an appointment to try to get back on my level thyroxine, my thyroid hormone, because my general practitioner has refused to fill my level thyroxine just because she's asking for more money for another visit. And each visit is out of pocket because she doesn't work with my insurance. So it's $200 to $300, depending on whether it's 30 minutes or an hour. And my doctor's assistant was trying to tell me that I need at least 30 minutes to discuss the thyroid issue, but I don't know what's to discuss since this is not a new issue. I mean, yes, I've been in remission for a year, but she should be able to put me back on the medication that I was on before. The hormone levothyroxine was doing pretty well for me to keep my thyroid um, functioning. So I don't see why she needs another visit. This is a new policy. Normally, the blood results, they if they require treatment or a medication, that's included in the previous visit that she ordered the blood work in. So this is a new thing, and it's very upsetting. You know, I don't have the money. I haven't been able to work in years, so she should be more understanding of my situation. Really, she shouldn't do this to anybody because we already paid $200. That's a lot of money, so she shouldn't ask for more money just to treat me for what we know I need to be treated for. My blood results also showed I was anemic, but not so severely anemic as I was before that, that I need another iron infusion. I do need to go up on my iron pills, which I just did, so I've been doubling on my iron. And so far it's going okay. I have had a lot of stomach issues, but that's normal for me. A lot of nausea, and uh, that could also have to do with the hypoglycemia. When I have low blood sugars, I get really nauseous, I get really shaky, I'm like tremors, I get dizzy, lightheaded, I just feel really out of it and really awful. And a couple of times these low blood sugars resulted in partial seizures in the middle of the night, actually shortly after I fell asleep both times. I was woken up to a seizure, which is really scary, because when I have a seizure, I'm conscious, but I'm shaking uncontrollably. It's very, very scary and uncomfortable, and then I'm in a lot of pain for days after, and my back has still been really flared up ever since. I have a lot of things flared up, but I really need to discuss my hypoglycemia, my low blood sugars. I've been going high as well, but I don't get symptomatic when I'm high. I do get low blood sugars every day and I'm always symptomatic or usually symptomatic when I have low blood sugars. I've been really flared up in a lot of ways, so I'm hoping this new endocrinologist will help me. My old endocrinologist is not going to fill my level thyroxine without ordering her own blood work and I called a couple other doctors of mine and they want to do the same thing rather than have me just fax over my blood results which would be much easier. So it seems like all these doctors just want to get money out of me themselves or through my insurance. Um, either way, it's at my expense and I don't have the time or energy to do that. I, Even though my nurse runs my blood work from home through my PIC line, it's still, since I already have the results, I don't see why I would need more blood work just to show what we already know. So yeah, hopefully this new endocrinologist will help me get my blood sugar issues in check and also give me my levothyroxine or another hormone to help me get my thyroid in control. I've been extremely tired and fatigued. I've been sleeping 16 hours a day or thereabouts for a while now. So, and if I try to stay up and function with 12 hours or, uh, or less, it's nearly impossible to stay awake. So I need at least 12 to 16 hours, which is, it's been very hard to function like that. And even so, even when I get 16 hours of sleep, I'm still exhausted. So I'm hoping that getting my thyroid under control with the hormone 
will help me with my fatigue. I set up an appointment for June 29th. That was the first thing they had available. Yeah, and then I made a call to my insurance guy. He left a message about my caregiving agency. He had a question about that, so we're playing phone tag. I couldn't get a hold of him. It's always a lot of phone calls. I just wanted to explain the phone calls. But if you like this video, please give this video a like, and please subscribe to see more videos like this, to see me on my chronic illness journey. Hit the bell for notifications on when I post videos. I'll see you later. Please take care and stay safe. Bye.